Throughout your lifetime, you might have seen countless gangster movies where the protagonist goes from zero to hero only to succumb to their own ambitions and greed. Well, this trope was first explored in the film Scarface, which was released way back in 1983 before gangster movies were even cool. In this film, the main character is portrayed by Al Pacino, and many people consider his performance in this movie to be one of the best in his lifetime. This movie is considered amongst the classics and comes in leagues with movies like Godfather. It also inspired a lot of gangster movies that came after it. The best part of this movie was its climactic battle where Al Pacino donned a Colt AR-15 and took down a swarm of men. This climax is still considered one of the most iconic climaxes in cinema history. At the end of the movie, we see that Tony Montana was killed, but what if we told you that Tony Montana didn't die? He was still alive and his story was explored in a comic book titled Scarface Scarred for Life. And in today's video, we will deep dive into this comic and learn what happened to Tony Montana after the movie. But before we get started with the video, we have a small request for you. If you like our content, please support us and like this video and subscribe to our channel. It might be a simple click for you, but it means an awful lot to us. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's get started. Who is Tony Montana? What happened to him in the movie Scarface in 1983? Tony Montana was the main lead in the film Scarface released in 1983 and this character was portrayed by the legend that is Al Pacino. Tony was a Cuban refugee who arrived in America during the Mariel boat lift. He's sent to a refugee camp with his friends Manny, Angel and Chi Chi because of his previous history of assault and crime. He gets a green card with the help of Miami drug lord Frank Lopez after he executes a former Cuban general upon his orders. After getting out of the camp, Tony starts working at a diner but he's dissatisfied with his life and realises he's meant for something big. To prove his worth to Frank, he makes a deal with Frank's right hand man, Omar, and promises to get him cocaine from a Colombian dealer. Upon arriving there, Tony enters the dealer's apartment with Angel and asks Manny and Chi Chi to stay on guard and if he doesn't arrive on time then come to his rescue. As it turns out, Tony is set up. The dealer cheats him and kills Angel with a chainsaw to extract money from him. As the dealer is about to kill Tony, Manny and Chi Chi come to his rescue and save him. Tony goes after the injured dealer and shoots him in broad daylight. Tony becomes wary of Omar and decides to deliver the cocaine directly to Frank. Once in Frank's mansion, Tony meets his young wife, Elvira, and falls for her. Tony soon becomes Frank's favourite because of his gutsy behaviour and fearless attitude. One day, Frank sends Tony and Omar to Alejandro Sosa, the cocaine kingpin of Bolivia, to make a deal with him. Tony sticks to his usual demeanour and demands a higher price for the deal, but Sosa's right-hand man calls him and warns him about something. Omar is angry at Tony for behaving rudely with Sosa. When Sosa returns, Omar apologises for Tony's behaviour and asks if they would reconsider the previous deal. Sosa says it's okay and asks Omar to return to Miami and talk with Frank. Tony also leaves with him but Sosa asks Tony to stay because he wants to talk about something. He then tells Tony that Omar is a double spy and kills him. Sosa doubts Frank's competency as a business owner and calls him a fool to keep Omar as his right hand man. Tony apologises, asks Sosa to keep his faith in him and gets a better deal for Frank. Back in Miami, Frank is upset at Tony for letting Sosa kill Omar. Frank is not ready to consider that Omar is a double spy and talks down to Tony about renegotiating the deals. He says Tony is his worker and should act like it and not try to be the boss. This infuriates Tony and he stops working with Frank. Tony then starts a small drug trade of his own. Once in a bar, Tony sees his little sister Gina dancing with a brat and scolds her for it. In the same bar, Frank arrives with Elvira and Tony starts flirting with her in Frank's absence. When Frank arrives, he asks Tony to leave but Tony won't listen. So Frank leaves the premises but sends two shooters in to kill Tony. Tony somehow manages to escape the assault and leaves to get revenge on Frank. He reaches Frank's mansion and kills him with the help of his trusted friends Manny and Chi Chi. Tony then proposes to Elvira for marriage and he soon takes over Frank's empire and becomes the new drug lord of Miami. But his reign doesn't last long and one of his deals was raided by the police who arrested him on the charges of evading tax, which will put him in jail for at least five years. So Tony reaches out to Sosa for help. Sosa agrees to help him but asks to kill an activist 
who's hell-bent on exposing Sosa's drug empire. Tony takes the assignment and is aided by Sosa's right-hand man, who fits a bomb in the activist's car. But on the day of the attack, the same car was onboarded by the activist's wife and kids. Tony refuses to kill women and children and shoots Sosa's henchmen. Tony soon finds that his sister Gina is missing and so is Manny. Upon reaching a location given by his mother, he discovers that Manny is with Gina and in a fit of rage, he kills his best friend and takes Gina with him. Back in his mansion, Tony was consuming high doses of drugs in the regret of killing his best friend, but he was unaware that Sosa's men were here and planning to attack him. It's right about then that Gina enters Tony's chamber. She's traumatized from losing the love of her life and begins to shoot at him. Suddenly, a different assassin comes to the scene and accidentally kills Gina instead of Tony. Tony takes care of the shooter and discovers that Gina is already gone. He realizes that the new arrivals are Sosa's men and they've already killed all of his men. Tony gets his cult AR-15 and fights back against the intruders. He manages to take down a number of them but due to the large number of men sent in by Sosa, Tony is also shot by multiple bullets and ultimately succumbs to his wounds. This seemed like the end of Tony Montana's empire, but in a comic book titled Scarface, Scarred for Life, it was revealed that after this event, Tony somehow survived and again began to climb to the top after losing it all. Tony Montana is still alive. Scarface, Scarred for Life comic book starts right after Tony's supposed death. We see two fed up officers, Agent Wabash and Agent Toombs, arrive at his mansion to find the villa bloody and an absolute mess. But they discover that despite being shot with multiple bullets, Tony Montana is still not dead. So they take Montana to the hospital, where he ends up spending eight months of his life in a coma. When Tony wakes up, he finds himself in the company of Wabash and Toombs. At first, Tony struggles to remember what happened but soon recalls that Sosa attacked him and killed his family and friends. The agents then ask Montana to work with them and create a case against Sosa. Tony denies this proposal and the agents remind him that he has nothing with him. His wife Elvira had left him, his sister Gina and best friend Manny are dead and his mother is planning to leave America and move to Cuba. They also remind him that he has taken a total of nine bullets and it's a miracle that he's even still alive. So moving or fighting is a no-no for Tony. The agents hand him a colostomy bag and say that he'll need to use this bag as his toilet for the next month or so. Tony asks when he can go to his home and the agents tell him that he has no home. In the last eight months he spent in hospital, the government took away his home, his cars, his boats, guns and of course his drug stash. He further clarifies that El Gordo, the Diaz brothers and an ex-military officer from Ukraine took over his drug trade. They hit Tony with the brutal truth that he has nothing left to his name, that helping the DEA is his only option. After Tony gets out of the hospital, they take him to a filthy apartment and leave him there in a wheelchair. The agents tell him he's allowed to take a stroll, but they strongly advise against that because the world believes that Tony is dead. If someone discovers that he isn't, they will notify Sosa and he will come to finish the job that has been left unfinished. Tony, being the nutshell he is, doesn't heed their advice and gets out of the apartment and into the streets. In the streets, he meets a peddler and asks him if he has some yayo, a popular drug in Miami. He then tastes the yayo but spits it out saying that it's not of high quality. Tony then asks the peddler to work with him to create more money by selling high quality drugs but the peddler slaps him, asks who the hell he even is and leaves the premises. Tony's then greeted by a guy who says that he is Boots Eddie and that he used to work with him and he recognizes him. Tony says he's not the person he thinks he is and mispronounces Boots Eddie's name. This irritates Boots Eddie and he kicks Tony two times and leaves him saying that he's soon going to be rich with just one call to a friend. He claims that Sosa will give him lots of money for notifying him that Tony is not dead. When Tony hears Sosa's name, he goes crazy. He tears the colostomy bag and chokes Eddie with it and he announces that Tony Montana is back to take over this city and will destroy everyone who comes in his way. Tony Montana rebuilds his empire. We will soon get to meet the new drug lords of Miami. Four people now rule Miami's drug empire. El Gordo is an obese man who can always be found eating at his table. The Diaz brothers who are famous for backstabbing everyone and there's General Vitaly Smenchenko, an ex-military Ukrainian who loves guns and explosives. A few weeks after Tony has killed Boots Eddie, he's back in business and fully recovered from all his injuries. He's then seen killing T. Long Johnson, 
another drug lord who rejected his proposal to work together. Agents Wabash and Toomes find Tilong's dead body. Here we see Toomes steal a pack of drugs from the dead body and it's revealed that Toomes is also a drug addict. Tony was a free man but Wabash and Toomes keep an eye on him and track his actions. Soon Agent Wabash and Toomes stop Tony in his tracks and hand him some intel about a secret bar which turns out to be the lair of the Diaz brothers. The guard apprehends Tony and the Diaz brothers are shocked by the arrival of Tony Montana. They surround him with their guns but decide to listen to what he has to say. Tony then provokes them against Sosa and says that Sosa supplies drugs to every dealer in Miami and if they take out El Gordo, his primary customer, then the Diaz brothers can have a major share of the drug trade. The Diaz brothers think about it but they want Tony to do the dirty work to prove himself before they join hands with him. The night before the day they're supposed to kill El Gordo, Tony dials Elvira's number. Elvira picks up the call and is surprised that Tony is still alive. She says she misses him but warns him not to call her again and hangs up. In the next panel, it's revealed that Elvira is now married to Sosa. The next day, Tony meets El Gordo at his favourite eatery, doing the thing he does best. El Gordo's guards thoroughly search Tony and find no weaponry on him. El Gordo is surprised to meet Tony and Tony starts mocking him, calling him a fat pig. A waiter then arrives and serves Tony a grilled pig, but it turns out the waiter was working for the Diaz brothers and put a gun inside the pig. El Gordo is frustrated and decides to shoot Tony, but Tony surprises him by putting his hand inside the pig, shooting El Gordo and his men. Later, he brings the head of El Gordo to the Diaz brothers who decide to partner with Tony Montana. After the death of El Gordo, Sosa needs a middleman to sell his drugs in Miami and thanks to Tony, the Diaz brothers get the position. But being the backstabbers that they are, the Diaz brothers decide to sell Tony to Sosa. We then see that Tony has arrived at General Schmenchenko's lair. At first, his guards are wary of him, pointing their guns at him, but his gutsy behavior wins over General Smenchenko, and he decides to listen to what Tony has to say. Tony offers the general a business proposition, but Agent Wabash and Toombs are eavesdropping the whole time. Tony realizes this and decides to talk with General Vitali by turning on the music. When Tony leaves after making the deal, the agents bring him inside their van and threaten him to not mess with their work. They beat him and tell him to clean up his act and not interfere with their investigation. Back at the Diaz brothers lair, we see that Tony is doing drugs with them and the brothers give him an assignment to deliver a package to a VIP contract in Hotel de Palms. They also prohibit him from taking a gun with him as they want to do more business with this guy. Unaware, Tony leaves to deliver the package, but it's soon revealed that the Diaz brothers have set Tony up and warn Sosa of Tony's arrival. Once in the hotel, Tony meets Elvira who warns him about the trap. Tony being quick, it turns out he did bring a gun with him. Sosa's men begin to attack but Tony narrowly escapes with the help of a car. Sosa's men pursue him but Tony manages to crash their car, killing many of them. He asks the survivors about their master and they reveal it to be Sosa. It's clear to Tony that the Diaz brothers had betrayed him and sold him to Sosa, so he decides to take revenge. At the Flamenco Isle, we see that the Diaz brothers are playing golf. Suddenly, their bodyguard is shot in the head and it's revealed that the killer is, of course, none other than Tony Montana. Tony shoots the brothers in the legs, making them unable to walk. As it turns out, Tony has a brutal plan to kill them. He brings a combine harvester and runs over the Diaz brothers, killing them in the most brutal way possible. This case is again investigated by agents Wabash and Toombs, who decide it's time to subdue Tony as he's gone too far. Meanwhile, Tony Montana has started rebuilding building his lost empire. He has a new crew, a new car, a new house and a new drug operation. At his house, Tony instructs his bodyguard to kill anyone who enters the house without permission. His bodyguard asks what to do with General Vitali, who is always having fun with chicks at the house. Tony says to let him do whatever he pleases as he is a vital ally and one can never have too many friends. On the other side, Sosa is dissatisfied with Tony's takeover of the Miami drug scene and decides to take him down for good this time. Elvira arrives in his cabin and inquires about his plans to kill Tony. Sosa says she is married to him now and should be worried about him but still decides to help Tony escape. Elvira feels that she loves Sosa and allows him to do whatever he pleases. Back at the Montana house, agents Wabash and Toombs arrive asking him to come with. Tony reluctantly goes with them but they soon reveal that they plan to subdue him because of his relentless actions. They take Tony to a swampland, cuff him and leave him to die at the hands of the alligators. But Tony, using his brains asks Toombs to fulfill his last wish, which is to get one last sniff of the Coca-Cola that he has on him.
him and Toombs being a junkie falls for it. Well Bash leaves him and goes to the car to wait for him. When Toombs tries to get the bag of cocaine from Tony's pocket, Tony kicks him and chokes him with the handcuffs. Tony then ambushes Wabash, ties the two agents to a tree and leaves their fate at the hands of the alligators. Tony then arrives at his mansion to find all his men dead. He thinks that the general may have betrayed him and searches for him in the mansion, but when he pushes into a room, he falls on Vitaly's dead body. It turns out it was Sosa who killed all of his men and Vitaly fought him but was eventually killed himself. Sosa then promises to complete the task that he had left thus far unfinished, but first needs to make Tony suffer. Will Tony Montana be able to take his revenge? After ambushing Tony's mansions and killing all his men, Sosa takes Tony with him to Bolivia. Sosa has set up his operation in a small village called San Lutanta in Bolivia. Sosa is considered a god in this village because he set up his drug business here and brought a lot of fortune to the area. So each spring, the people throw a festival to pay tribute to Sosa and swear their loyalty to him. Back at Sosa's mansion, we learn that his minions are torturing Tony. Sosa then leaves the torture to his minion as he heads for the festival. His minion decides to castrate Tony and is about to do so but is stopped by Elvira and her man. Elvira's man shoots the minions and frees Tony. Elvira says that she has prepared everything for Tony's departure and asks him to leave and not interfere with Sosa's business again. Tony then leaves with Elvira's man who asks him to get on a boat and escape but Tony decides otherwise. He tears open a packet of drugs, sniffs it all and decides to kill Sosa. Tony arrives at the festival but is dumbfounded by the crowds gathered to see Sosa. Sosa's men inform him about Tony's escape and he leaves the festival. As Sosa is about to enter his limo, Tony stops him while wearing a disguise and kills everyone, including Sosa. This marks the completion of Tony Montana's revenge. He then takes Sosa's limo and arrives at the mansion to take over Sosa's empire. Elvira confronts him and points a revolver at Tony, claiming he always destroys everything. Elvira claims that she was happy with Sosa and Tony ruined that. Right about then, a police chopper arrives at Sosa's mansion and it's revealed that Agent Toombs is still alive. The police ask Tony to surrender or they'll shoot. Tony then pulls out his gun and he says that he loves Elvira, but he isn't about to die after rebuilding everything again and will shoot her if she doesn't stop. We then see Agent Toombs aim at Tony and Elvira tell Tony that he can't escape even if he shoots her. The feds will shoot him or he'll die at the hands of the village who are angry at him for killing their boss. Tony, being arrogant, announces that nobody can touch him and that he's been through a lot but always comes out on top. We then see a bullet being shot, but it's not revealed who killed whom. Did the feds kill Tony? Did Tony kill Kill Elvira? Did Elvira kill Tony? We aren't given an answer to what happens to Tony Montana. Marvelous verdict. This comic book came out in 2006, 23 years after the movie was released. Despite the book exploring Tony Montana's story further, it still received mixed reviews from audiences. Some consider the movie's climax is its soul, and to mess with it means taking away the true essence of that film. Some liked the comic book as it explored Tony's story further as they didn't want his story to end and wanted him to take revenge. Despite the mixed reception the comic got, one thing is clear, Tony Montana still remains an iconic character and he'll always remain so because and he will always remain so because of that legendary portrayal by Al Pacino and with that being said if you like our content like and subscribe if you haven't done so already otherwise have a good one and be safe thanks everyone